And that person who is doing that needs a lot more training in how to do this appropriately. But they're on the right track. They're trying to get somewhere. You know, they're, they're, going, they're going in the right direction. But there are people who will train other people about how to do this, okay? I don't know if any of you have ever read one of those websites. They still exist. They're still out there. They have this particular type that's really, really big. The font is really, really big. And a bunch of things are highlighted in yellow and, uh, and kind of have that three-dimensional vision coming towards you so that it sticks out a little bit more. And there's a call to action button. Like, if you are ready now to do this, if you are ready to change your experience and change it for the better, and it, but then if you're not, you just keep reading. And this thing goes on. And if you printed it out, it would probably go on for 25 pages. And just in this big font, telling you how it's going to change you. I know people who have done this, who have taken these courses. They're copywriting courses. And they tell you exactly how to give people just a little tiny bit of the answer. But not enough to make them feel like they've got it. Like that you have it. And because you have it, they need to get that answer. It's very, very interesting. And you talk around things. So politicians are great at this, right? But if everybody can do it together, then we can really pull the wool over everyone's eyes, collectively, and we don't have to do anything other than manipulate the fuck out of one another. It's great. Um, uh, totally sponsored by NEPR tonight, by the way. Um, just to let you know. So. So basically, um, I want to show you how that works in live, real time. I was a person, I was a person, and now I'm a man. I was just an ordinary human being, and now I'm full grown. I'm an adult. Now how did I get here? I'm going to tell you all how it happened. First, I'm going to tell you the first thing that happened to me. I was born. We all were. But my, my birth was a little bit different because it didn't happen when I was an infant. No. It happened at the age of 26. And it was a rebirth. It was a rebirth. It was my real birth. My first birth, thank you, Mom. I appreciate it. But really, my real birth was when I was 26. And I went from being Jerry to Gerald, full name. I went from being handy to handsome. I went from being Jerry Handy to Gerald Handsome. And I will tell you that that moment, when that all occurred, when that all happened, when I realized, when I looked in the mirror and I saw a handsome fellow, and I don't mean just physically, but internally, I was handsome. Handsome all the way through. I realized that I could change people's existence. I could change their lives just by standing like this, shoulder length apart, okay? basically doing Tai Chi all the time without anyone knowing. I am here to show you how to do that, how to be whatever age you are right now, and how to rebirth yourself into your full potential, into your adultness, into your growth period, into your spurt, if you will. Now, how does this happen? How does one, how does one do it? Did you see what I just did there? I repeated something. And I repeated something because it was important. It was, it was, it was. And I did it again. Now why did I do it? We'll come back to it, or maybe we won't. Are you ready? Yes, good. This is not real, but this is. Did you see what I did there? Great. Remember, it's all about boxes. Do you go in the A or the B? Would you like a C? Do you know the rest of the alphabet? Of course you all do. And that's what's important, is understanding the alphabet and the numbers. Now there's less numbers than alphabets, correct? No, maybe. And that's the point. If we all understand this, just the chest, that's all you need. Just get rid of the legs. We don't need them. If you think about it, all they help us do is walk. So what the f and so like the, these people like they do this and it's, it's incredible. They just like say this bullshit and people are like, <coughs> fucking completely captivated. And the reason why this is so fascinating to me is because I had to do, I had to do two shows on this. I had to do two full-length scripted fucking shows on the self-help new age paradigm crap. And the reason is, is because I got hooked into this shit. And I believed a lot of this crap. It was awesome. But I was always
always skeptical about it, you know, but, but I was always, you know, but there's a, there's a problem when there's kind of this mass of people around you that you like and you trust and you're friends with that are also buying into it, so you kind of feel like you need to go along with it. It's kind of like Catholicism, which I grew up in, okay? Now, there's nothing wrong with Catholicism at all, okay? I mean, uh, it's, it's a great cult. Um, uh, you know, it's got, it's got a, it's got a, you know, some, it's got dudes who don't get married. I think that's important. Um, you know, and there's rules that get set by a guy in a big white hat. Now these, these things to me are imperative to our culture. Um, but then it just continues, you know. I just, I, I start going to a, a Buddhist college and I become Buddhist and, and that's, you know, fine and dandy. And then I, you know, get rid of that whole fucking thing and I just start getting really weird. Whoa, you know, I'm like talking to stuff. It's not there. I'm getting information. Channeling shit. It was ridiculous, okay? And the thing is, is I, I always took it with this grain of salt, but at the same time, I wanted all of it to be real because I wanted to be kind of out of this painful suffering that I was kind of going through at the time. And I still go through painful suffering. I just don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> And I mean, I do give a fuck. I mean, I give a fuck about my painful suffering, and I give a fuck about other people's painful suffering. So I'm giving a lot of fucks. But I also don't give fucks. We've talked about this, how important it is to not give fucks. It's very popular in 2015 right now to give no fucks. And so I'm trying to jump on that in the give no fucks thing. And you can say that that's a cult too, the give no fucks. But it's great, you know, it's a wonderful thing. But I'm watching, at the same time, I'm watching some friends of mine who are doing phenomenally well with their businesses. They're doing phenomenally well at using these scripts, at using this language, and hooking people in who desperately want to do what they love to do. And hooking them in through something and just making, seriously, millions of fucking dollars. And I'm sure in some weird way, they're helping people. They're really, really, that's, and that's the thing with all of this is everybody is genuinely, I believe, no I don't, I think probably 70% of the people out there are genuinely trying to assist other people. And other people are just, they're, uh, they're just racketeers, it's pretty amazing, it's pretty phenomenal. You know, and I commend them for being able to, uh, you know, just act like that for, you know, full on, 100%. But don't you find this strange? You've got to feel hot about health, okay? You have to feel like horny <laughs> about selling your nutrition to other people. Do you get what I'm saying right now? You need to feel sexy when you're talking to your clients. Sexy. You need to feel like you are wearing the most kind of low-cut dress with the highest heels and that you are just gonna fuck the hell out of that nutritional consult. Do you know what I'm talking about right now? That's what you need to do. I'm taking it to an extreme right now, but, but you know, but it's, it's true. Like, I'm, I'm watching it a friend of mine just used that as, as a way to, to, to sell, and it works, man. It fucking works. It's great. But it's disturbing. I mean, it's, it's, this, it's this really, really disturbing thing to, to watch. Because it, on one hand, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, I mean, these people are uh, adults with thinking capacities within their this. And, and, and then somehow they're going to be able to, you know, kind of, you know, determine for themselves somehow how to, you know, reasonably, like I was saying, kind of go towards this thing and go, you know, this sounds a little, you know, that, but it's, just, and the thing, the thing is, is that the pressure is on. The pressure is put on in a particular way, and there's one person in particular, I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen him, but he's phenomenal at doing this. 
do you know that it's all in your mind? That it's all in your mind that everything that you want can be achieved by thinking about it? Doesn't that sound strange? But it's true because God wants you to be rich. I mean, look at me. I am rich, and I am not only rich in the bank, but I am rich because of you. I am rich because of my wife. I am rich because of my children. I am rich because of my house. I don't know if you've seen it. But I am rich. And I'm rich because I said yes. I said yes to God. And I looked in the gospel and I saw that God was saying over and over again, yes, I want you to have. I looked at those words and I reinterpreted them. And I saw that that reinterpretation was helping people. But can you imagine people saying over and over again, hell, 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 hell. Well, we all know where they're going. But if you want heaven, Right now, if you want it, then you just can have it. Isn't that amazing? Just by thinking of it, just by thinking, yes, I want this money. Yes, I want to serve you. Yes, I want fucking crazy. <laughs> this guy, Joel Osteen, has a fucking stadium. He has a stadium in Texas. 50,000 people come a week to his service to talk about the prosperity gospel. It has nothing to do with Christianity. It has nothing to do with the gospel. The scriptures, they like kind of come up on the TV and he kind of talks around them. He just kind of picks and chooses and he just, he basically is talking about positive thinking. He's just taking the positive thinking movement from the New Age and self-help Oprah shit and just shoving it through Christianity because it fucking sells like hotcakes. It's amazing. I'm I am incredibly impressed with this motherfucker. He is <laughs> phenomenal. And in my show, Super Happy Melancholy X Bialidocious, I play this bastard, and I do him for like 10 minutes. And after a while, I just, I feel like I'm a candle within a candle. Like I have, the candle inside has dripped wax on itself, just trying to just, just fall apart so that it cannot be a candle anymore. But then another candle comes around it and it's like, no. And it just gets trapped inside its own wax and it's just this waxy fucking mess. <laughs> but one of the strangest things I ever saw and um, it was really, really phenomenal was when I was uh, getting really, really into hardcore. And I realized at the age of 15 that I was straight edge, that this was a thing. I was a kid who didn't do drugs, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't have a girlfriend, so fucking was not an option as well. So, you know, in terms of the whole, like, the way that straight edge was, you know, put a cross in, in the hardcore movement, I was like, I was a perfect fit. And I didn't want to do any of those things either, well, the sex part I did, but I didn't, I didn't want to drink or do it, I just didn't want to do it. And so, like, when I would find these bands that were singing about this and how great it was, I was, like, jumping on the bandwagon, putting an X on my hand, which, you know, identified me straight edge, and I would, you know, go to these shows. And one of the first shows I ever went to was this band Shelter. And Shelter was, a, was kind of an offshoot of this band Youth of Today. Now, Youth of Today was uh, fucking New York hardcore, jockcore. These guys were, like, built, like... So these guys were solid as rocks, okay? Like six packs, wearing like, like the kind of pants or shorts that you go running in. I mean, they didn't look like hardcore kids in any way, shape, or form, but when you listen to them, they did, but they, they were just kind of beefcake-y. It was kind of strange. And they would just be singing about how great it was that they were all friends, you know? I mean, you couldn't distinguish anything that they were singing about, you know? It's just like, oh, fuck, I'm not! The man died! It was great. I mean, he sounded like a bird, an angry, like an angry bird, right? But like a real angry bird, not the thing. Anyway, but I went to go see this guy, and Ray Capo was the singer. He was Ray of today, 
ridiculous name, Ray of Today. Like Youth of Today, singer, Ray of Today, terrible. Anyway, so I went to go see Shelter, and this was like his band. Nobody else in the band was in the band at the time um, from Youth of Today. But they were Krishna. They were Krishna kids. He had converted to being, to following Krishna. So he had the little tail in the back. And everybody in the band did, and they were praying before their set. I mean, it was really weird. And this guy comes up to me, and this is a club. I mean, this is an all-ages venue, okay, with a bunch of hardcore kids, you know, like wearing, like, hardcore t-shirts and blah, 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 blah. And this Krishna guy comes up to me, and he's like, would you like a coconut peanut butter ball? I'm like, well, what's in them? He's like, coconuts and peanut butter. I was like, no. I was really confused. I didn't know what was going on. I mean, they were just, you know, going around trying to give people coconut peanut butter balls, which is fine. But then all of a sudden, like, they come out and they just, like, take the stage and they're crazy, but Ray's singing all of a sudden. And he's singing about, like, all these Hindu gods and shit. And, like, there were all of these kids there who had little Krishna tales. This was like this new movement, Krishna Core. Ridiculous name. <laughs> But it was true, Krishna Core. And it's like, it had taken like all these elements of straight edge and like, you know, jamming it through, you know, Eastern philosophy. You could have picked any of them, right? You could have picked Buddhism, just, you know, Hinduism as is, but, you know, he decided to go with Krishna, blah, blah, blah. And, and it just was like this kind of perfect ridiculousness. But like all of these kids who were in youth of today were Italian American Catholic kids who just like left all of that became straight, not like you have to leave it, but like, it was just another dogma to adopt. But it was amazing how many people, for me, adopted that, you know? And what's really, really fascinating at this point is in youth culture, like some of the music, I still listen to a lot of metal, a lot of punk, and there's a whole strain of this music that are Christ, Christian bands. And I mean like evangelical, <coughs> incredibly homophobic, like just really high on Jesus stuff. But they call themselves secular bands, which is confusing because they're on these Christian metal labels, but they're like, no, dude, we're like fucking, you know, secular though. But what it gives them the ability to do is it gives them the ability to climb the Christian charts and the metal charts at the same time. So they're able to kind of get these two audiences. And it's a really interesting thing in terms of converting people, if you think about it. Because if you are just sleeved and look like any other metal kid, but you have this message that comes out every once in a while about Jesus, the amount of people who will roll over into that it must be high, because it's just, it's, it's a perfect storm. It's a perfect storm. And the, and the thing is, is that the whole thing, around, not necessarily metal, but around punk, is about thinking for yourself. Completely. Like, arguing with everyone about everything. It's like being a liberal. Except with music. All the time. You never agree on anything, maybe you agree on some things, etc., etc., etc. But I mean, that's the fascinating part to me. And, and as we're coming to like all of these movements within politics, what I'm finding is that everything becomes this package deal. It's the same thing. If you are a Democrat, you have to buy into all of these things about being a Democrat. You just take all the you know, bad shit and you just kind of focus on the good stuff or whatever you do. You know, maybe you complain about your party, but blah, blah, blah. But the same kind of goes with like the Green Party, anything like that. And I'm just, I'm, I'm super, super confused about where we're kind of headed as a nation. But I am. I'm really, really confused because it's more about the party dynamics than anything else. We could talk about this all fucking day and you boom. But, the, but what's really fascinating to me is that I don't feel like there are many politicians out there 
who actually say what they really think and therefore follow that. Gotten into this point with our culture, with friends and people that we hang out with, where it's like people have to fit into this particular parameter. And if they don't, we'd want nothing to do with them. Maybe we'll blog about them. Maybe we'll tweet about the issue. Maybe we'll go to a public forum and go, rah, rah, rah. But, in general, we won't put ourselves in a circumstance or a situation where we are ultimately, unbelievably, incredibly uncomfortable because we do not agree with the set of circumstances that these people are necessarily talking about. We will defriend people on Facebook because of it. But aren't we just manipulating ourselves in that circumstance? Aren't we basically just saying, well, I don't want to think this way. I don't want to be this way. I don't want to have this. And therefore, I'll just shut it down. I'll shut it off. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to think it, etc. Now, we all do this. Sometimes it's really healthy, you know? You're like fucking overwhelmed by all of this shit. And you don't want to deal with it. And so you just shut it off. Like, I got off of Facebook for a week. It was a brilliant time, let me tell you. It was amazing. I highly recommend it. It's incredible. Your whole world opens up. You know flowers? I looked at those. Pretty incredible. I ate something, I actually tasted it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm serious. I walked down the street, I could feel my feet. But there is something about it where it kind of cuts you off from reality. Because basically, you're just getting pummeled with the same kind of feedback over and over again that not only have you curated, but the algorithm is curating for you. And so as you are reading through this feed and reading through all these things, I mean, it's picking up on all of the words and the language that you use to kind of show you what you basically want to see already. And maybe every once in a while there's something disturbing, or there's some, but, that, but, but you are going to jump on the bandwagon with the people who are disturbed by that thing. Maybe. Or maybe you're one of those people who argues with everybody about everything, which can be fine too, but is also annoying. I mean, there's great. It's like, it's that sort, it's a certain thing where it's like, we should have this open discourse. We should have these open discussions. But if you're going to argue with me about every single word that I use and every single choice that I make, fuck you. I mean, it's the, it's the same thing. I mean, there, there are people, you know, uh, uh, why? Why do they exist? Seriously. It's like, it's, it's kind of the, op you could say it's the opposite of being manipulated in a sense, but it, it's, uh, you know, at, at the, the point at where you get jaw jacked and just get talked at. <laughs> That's what I think. I like how you think, but I'm going to tell you what I think right now. That was an interesting statement, but you forgot to use a the, where I would have used a the. I'm going to tell you about this now. I'm going to tell you about the thought that I'm having in my mind right now. I'm just going to stare at you the whole time. Are you there? It doesn't matter. You walked away. I'm still going to talk. I'm like, mama, me, 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 mama, mama. <laughs> Fucking Christ, man. We've all met these people. Now, now we're going to just take a break from the whole manipulation thing. Let's, let's see how we can stop this. Let's, let's talk about it. Okay, there's different ways. One way is to, is, to just, is to just be like, whoa, gotta go. Fake text is also really good. Whoa, oh my god, really? I gotta go. Fake text is awesome. You can use fake text, but what are we doing? We are manipulating the situation. So, we can also say, you know, everything you're saying is incredibly fascinating. My brain is getting overloaded, overloaded by the fascination. I feel like I need to go process it for a while and get back to you like in three months. That's something else you could do. That's nice. Or you could just kind of say to them, you know what? Everyone hates you. Um, not everybody, but a lot of people do. We've been talking about it. Um, you need to change. I don't, now, I don't think that that would work really well. It's kind of mean, but it's accurate. It's accurate, and it cuts through a lot of the bullshit. Does, does it not? I think that that is, is something that we should do. 
And in general, like, like for example, have you ever been in a circumstance where you're seeing somebody, or maybe a group of people, being manipulated around something? Like they're being, they're just, they're, they're, you can see it. Like you're, you're, you know, you're at a talk like this, um, or you're at a presentation, and you're just kind of like, this is fucking bullshit. And, but people are like, oh my god, this is like so amazing. How did you love this? It's like dancing with the stars. They just are going on and on, you know, about how amazing this, this process or whatever it is is going, is, is happening. And, um, and you just kind of want, you want to say something, but you don't. But why, why do we choose not to do it? It's because there's such a, kind of a, a quorum of people around us who are just like, oh my god, it's just like the singing and everything, it's just like, it's, just like, it's amazing, it's gonna take over the world, it's like the next Green Day, la, 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 la. I loved Green Day back in the day, before they were what they are now, which is fucking crap shit. And that's like double shit. Both together, crap and shit, mix, and that. Have you ever seen it? It's gross, crap shit. And you throw in some, some Dookie, which was one of their albums, in there, and get a little bit of that in there, and you just, and you're like, you know, a solid log of fuck. Anyway. But like, why don't we say anything? Like, I go to, like, I, I talked about this last week, but it's like I, I, or the week before, I can't fucking remember anymore. People have been doing 24 shows, I got 10 left, this is insane, what am I doing? So th this, but you know, I see, I see this, pre I see, you know, I'm at this table with all of these people at a conference, and there's this, like, something that's happening on stage. And it's, I didn't talk about this, and it's a guy with a dog, with a talking dog, okay? And he's made, like, a jaw. The jaw looks, like the dog's real jaw, you know, but he's got this little butt. You can see him doing this, right? Where, and, and he's a horrible ventriloquist. He's just like, hey, what's happening over here? Right, I mean, you just see his mouth moving. And then you see the dog going kind of like, I don't know, what do you think's happening? Okay, and it's a, like a little bulldog, like a little tiny bulldog, right? And he's like, ah, what do you, what do you think of this audience? Ah, ah, what do you think? And basically the same voice, just a little scratchier. And, it was, it was phenomenal because the dog fell asleep during the presentation. So like the dog's mouth is moving, its eyes are doing this, it's starting to rock back and forth. And the guy just, he can't see that because the dog's facing this way, he's facing this way, and the dog, and then the dog like kind of, you know, wakes up for a second and falls back asleep. It was incredible, right? And then, at the end of his presentation, he starts showing, he's like, you know, one of the great things about doing all of this and doing this show is, is, is being able to kind of really help people um, and really, you know, it's, it's, it's just one of these, you know, we love animals, I love animals, and I just want to show you just, just what the happiness is that, 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 that animals bring us. And it's just, a pic just pictures with fucking inspiring music, just unbelievably just like, I'm gonna find the sun, you know, stuff like that, playing, well, just pictures of people playing with their animals. And it was like the most manipulative tactic. It's like, why are you, you're paying $15,000 for 15 minutes on the fucking stage and you're spending two of them showing us a PowerPoint of, of people with their animals <laughs> having fun, you know? And the people at my table that I'm sitting with are like, that was so great, oh my God, we have to book that guy. That is just, people are gonna love that in Idaho. Well, of course you're gonna love it in Idaho. <laughs> The fuck? There's nothing going on in Idaho. They don't know the difference, you know? They don't, if the Little Mermaid comes on Broadway, on, you know, they're gonna be like, oh, Little Mermaid, Because they don't know, they don't understand that there's art and there's this. But what am I supposed to do? You know, I, I was texting with a friend and she was at another table and she was like, I'm not drunk enough for this. That's what she wrote to me, you know? But I'm kind of like, I, I'm like, Looking around me, everybody at my table, nine other people, are thoroughly enjoying this. And I wanted to say, what the fuck is wrong with all of you? But the thing is, is like, these are people who could possibly hire me to come and do this weird shit. But after, you know, I walk away and I'm thinking, they would never hire me. They like the dog guy. It's like there's, you know? And so it just, it becomes this thing where you, you, you have to wonder, What would happen if every time you see a manipulative situation, and you might be fucking wrong about it, you might be completely wrong about it, you just call it out. 
<laughs> you, right now? No, stop it. I think that you just took that person for a ride. Oh yeah, oil change, I know what they look like. You just get in there, right? You just become like, like right now I'm working on a project with a bunch of people called the Ombudsman Agency, kind of, you know, what the Ombudsman is at an at a organization, the Ombudsman is kind of that neutral party who kind of like is trying to make sure that the organization is doing all the right things and is taking all the consumer considerations into consideration because they're considerations. And they're making sure that it all, you know, you know, that they're doing everything that they're supposed to do right. And I feel like we need to have like cultural ombudsmen just walking around, you know, just going like in the back of riffs and being like, too much grace, you know, like whatever it is, like just kind of like walking around and just, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, not enough vodka in this, you know, like whatever it is, just kind of and pointing it out. It's like, I know you're trying to make me buy another drink, put more vodka in that. I used to, you know, I have a friend who's a bartender, I'm gonna text him right now. You can scare people, you know, maybe there's an app we can create. Let's create an app called anti-manny, anti-manipulation, short, right? So whenever anybody says like, I'm gonna go get a manny, you know they're not talking about a manicure. They're gonna go and fuck somebody up by, you know, fuck them from getting manipulated. That's what's happening, the anti-manny. That's what we're starting right now, anti-manny app, okay? Find it, Apple, Android, again! Why are there only two? There's only two. Let's get with that. Let's go, let's, let's go to headquarters right now. We are taking a plane. We are flying to California. We are going to the headquarters of Google Apple. We are going to demand that they uh, uh, aren't so big. <laughs> because they're, they're taking over. Has anyone read The Circle by Dave Eggers? I highly recommend it. It's all about kind of like, like what's going on with Google kind of taking over. I mean, it's a novel and stuff, but it's good. And it freaks you out. And you're just like, I'm just like, I'm going to, no. And this is, the, this is that other side, though, too, you know, like, when I started kind of getting into agnosticism and atheism and all these different things, and I'm not necessarily atheist or more agnostic anyway, but like the new atheism movement scares the fuck out of me because these people, like a lot of, it's, it's a lot of men, they're, they are really arrogant in the way that they talk about, they're super smart, but they're really arrogant in the way that they talk about religion and other cultures and, and, and all this stuff. And they, they just kind of, you know, and the thing is, is they're trying to use reason-based logic to kind of cut through all of this crap, which I enjoy, but they also say really kind of sexist and culturally inappropriate things to try and make a point. And so it, it, it's kind of like, oh, why are you doing that? Because then atheists look like jerks. So there's that other side too, like I'm talking about now. Like I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to walk into riffs and say too much grease, especially because they got a big ad in my program. Um, you know, and that's weird. That's weird. Like this, this is this, this is weird. See that? NAPR. I love love you guys, but it's weird. It's weird. It's like, you know, because I mean, I came up with it, like I'll, you know, I'll whore myself out for NEPR because I like them, you know, and their media spot is great, you know, it's awesome. But it's also kind of like, it's kind of strange. It's kind of weird. Like my whole program, there's all these ads in there. Like I like everyone in there, support your local businesses and everything, but it's sort of strange. Kind of like ad in your face. Go to Silver Spoon. No! Eat some eggs! It's just like, you know what I mean? It's just like, it kind of is, I mean, I, it's kind of like, I'm a person up here who doesn't even like advertising. I'm like, I'm, it, it freaks me out, right? But I made a voiceover demo because I'm a fucking actor and it's how people make money. Have I done it yet? No, because I'm scared because I hate corporations. It's like, what am I doing? I can do this. But do I want to do it for McDonald's? Ronald, Ronald, blah, 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 blah. I would feel like an asshole. But I have other friends and they're able to like, make the, they, they create the cognitive dissonance for themselves. They're just able to say like, I go in, I'm doing this ad for Gap, I'm able to walk out and be like, that was gross, but I just made X amount of dollars. That's awesome, I have a real big problem with that. Because I basically feel like there's so many manipulative tactics going on at all times that it's like, I just don't wanna take part in that shit, but, the fact of the matter is, you guys walking in, paying $5, I have no idea where that $5 is coming from. You could all be doing crazy shit out there. Or doing, you know, working for crazy organizations. You know, who are trying to take over the world. And like, and like, you know, 
you know, like you're healing people, yeah. right, you know, it's like, I don't, you know, yo-yos, people could, could get choked. I mean, this is, see, like, there's all sorts of things, like, you, and you, you're a hacker, like, that's a bad word, anonymous, they do, they, you know what I mean? So it's like, like, look at Alexander, he's like going in and out on the camera, I can't even tell what he's doing. I don't know if he's like up on the pores of my face, right? Yeah, I don't know what's happening. I don't, it's like, and that's the thing is we cannot control everything. There's no way. If we thought about everything, where it came from, like I met these guys once and I like had said something at the end of one of my shows or whatever, and they're like, you know what we want to do? We just want to get as much money as we can, right? Ever, like as much money as we possibly can. We just want to burn it. <laughs> I'm like in front of that. No, I don't know. Just like in the woods. I'm like, okay, so you want to make a point to each other, to, your, to each other, in a circle, right? Am I getting this right? Yeah, we're in a circle. All right, you want to be like in a circle, and you want to burn all of your money. Yeah. Why? Symbolic. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome on one hand, but like if nobody is, if nobody's actually seeing it, except, you know what I mean, it just, it's just like such a strange thing. It's just like such an odd thing. What just happened for the last 40 minutes? Where were you? Were you in Hawaii? Was it fun? Did you have a good time? Did you splash in the water? That's the wind. Did you have a coconut? Peanut butter ball, maybe? Did you experience yourself outside of yourself, within yourself, and outside of yourself all at the same time? Because I did, and it was wonderful. I'm in front of a volcano and it's about to explode. It's about to go everywhere. There's gonna be sediment, there's gonna be lava just running down the side of the mountain, like sperm down someone's leg that doesn't want it there. It's gonna be an amazing experience. Hot, fiery lava just running down and wiping out a village of people that I don't necessarily like. And I'm gonna enjoy that. I'm gonna soak that vision inside of my mind. What's your vision? It's the same as mine because it should be. If our visions correlate, maybe we can do something together with each other. And if we can't do that thing, then maybe we could date. Maybe we could hang out. Maybe we could listen to one another for just a little while. It goes on for infinity, this pen. It just keeps going and going and going. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's so strange that something that's so solid that basically just writes down your thoughts, feelings, ideas, situations, your journal entries, those things that happened to you when you were eight or nine or 10. Do you remember all those ages? I wouldn't want to. I'd want to burn those things myself, but you might want to keep them as a sacred thing inside of yourself, but I wouldn't necessarily because when you're in elementary school, you don't really want to write down anything anymore. You want to put it into a computer database so that you can remember every single aspect of your life of everything that's ever happened to you, and then be able to use that against someone else later. We're in Hawaii. What a wonderful place. A great place, a wonderful place, a place that we basically took over as a nation and decided to make it our own because of obviously they couldn't do it on their own. Hawaii, land of alohas, and, which basically means goodbye and hello at the same time. Isn't that amazing that a word could mean the same thing, the same not thing? I want you to join me there. I want you to join me in Hawaii. I want you to join me because I'm moving there. <laughs> and we're going to be a tribe. Don't you want to be part of a tribe? We'll be a tribe together. Just all of us. In a huddle. 
with me leading you, and you following my lead. Isn't it wonderful? Not having to have any responsibility, just to depend on me and my words and what I tell you to do. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? Just listen to me. Just follow what I say and do. Isn't that incredible to just kind of let go and just get into what I'm talking about? Wonder. Just kind of wonder, what am I going to eat today? I don't have to worry because Master is taking care of me. Isn't that wonderful? Wondering, when should I go to the bathroom? Master will tell me when to go. Because I will. I will tell you when to go. And when to leave and when to stay. It's wonderful, Hawaii. <coughs> land of enchantment. This land of enchantment. No, that's New Mexico. That's going to be our next location when we move there later. That's enough. Um, so, yeah, no show next week. <laughs> March, we got a hell of a lineup, though. Yeah. You'll be getting information about that accordingly. Thanks for coming out on a cold fucking night.